Hello and welcome to a new topic of discussion today. Today we are going to start with the topic of the stress strain transformation. Now this topic essentially relates with the concept that if you are looking at a body within a body if you have a particular point right and within the same point if you are looking at a different set of axis at a different plane which is passing through the element how do the stresses change now remember that for these particular cases we have mostly looked at sections or points within the body where we draw the section plane which is perpendicular to the longitudinal axis and why did we do that because it's easy to do we can you know easily derive the stresses and the strains and so on right but now what we are going to look at that within the same point within the body it's not a different body we are from and then the same point within the body if we are looking at a different plane then how do the stresses change now you can you can do this in in many different ways you can just go by the plane mechanics you can you know take the section plane and you can resolve the forces but you will see that there is a loss of generality over there that for all the different planes that you take you always have to go back and derive some of the equations of the stresses and the forces and so on the chapter this particular chapter on stress strain transformation essentially makes your life easy from the concepts you have already learned for sections which are perpendicular to the longitudinal axis if you know the stresses if you easily know the stresses in those sections how do you find the stresses at any set of axis at any plane which passes through the same point within the body so let's go ahead and take a look now as i was saying that this is a concept right which you have been exposed to earlier for some special cases now let's take a look at some of the special cases which we have already seen for example if you remember that we had seen for the case of the pure axial load remember when we have this p and p which is pulling right we have this you know p over a which is there and for the same thing for the for the for the same uh, uh, body which we have if we take a plane which is along that 45 degree angle this is one of the special cases for example for the material wood we have seen right that the wood is you know particularly weak in shear and the shear tends to peak up when your theta that angle of rotation that you see over here this theta becomes equals to 45 degrees and for that what we had seen like let me turn my pen on what we had seen that the failure planes typically happen at this 45 degree angles that you see over there so we have been exposed to some of these concepts as you know some special case now remember this is within the same point within the body within the point a over here as you see if you take a you know a perpendicular section whereas and at the same point if you take a 45 degree section which is shown for another point b over here then you, you tend to get these kinds of stresses that you see over within the body we have also seen this concept for the torsion for the torsion remember that if you take a you know small chunk of the element a small element within the body which is in which is inclined and perpendicular to the longitudinal axis it is an element which is in pure shear whereas for the same body remember our famous experiment the chalk experiment that we did there also we saw this you know these failure plane angles was happening at that 45 degree so these are the special cases now you might be wondering that now instead of 45 degree if i take a 30 degree plane if i take a 20 degree plane that how are the stresses going to vary so you can again as i said you can derive this from the concepts of pure mechanics but it just becomes very tedious so this chapter focuses on making your life easy in 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 providing you some easy you know set of relationships where you can just transform the stresses from the sections with a perpendicular to the longitudinal axis to any plane which passes at any particular angle so this is the ma main objective of this chapter so what it essentially looks at if you have a body this is a 3d uh, you know small element that you have taken infinitesimally small so if you have these set of stresses which are acting within the body if you are looking at a rotated you know element over there at the same point q so this you please observe this particular point q that you see at the same point q if you're looking at a rotated element over there or a different plane of section that how do the stresses and the strain get transformed when you're looking at this different plane now why is it important why do we need to study this well a couple of reasons you already saw that for the wood which is say weak in shear the failure even though if you are you know pulling or pushing with forces perpendicular to the normal plane the failure may happen at an arbitrary angle than what you expect and this is true for many of the structures 
that if you look at other kind of structures you will see that in many of these structures depending upon the loading you know the failures may happen at very different planes so ideally within a structure you should be able to you know draw these you know you see this one over here these are the contours of the stresses so these contours of the stresses are usually obtained by transforming within the same point you transform the section and do every time you you know plot the peak stresses which are happening at the different points within the body essentially to track that you know how the body fails along which plane is the body going to fail right so we are going to delve deeper into this one through the transformation of the stresses now 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 with, within these ones although i i showed you the uh, 3d diagram over here particularly for us civil engineers and also mechanical engineers it often suffices to look at 2d elements and i will tell you why for example and 2d stress elements remember we had discussed that these are the which which are the elements this is the plane stress element that is if you have a body over here then in that particular case you have no stresses about the z axis remember this was the plane stress case where you have the sigma z equals to 0 tau z x equals to 0 tau z y was equals to 0 and why is this relevant well if you see for you know several of the elements that you see in our daily life for example this spanner example which we have seen and the most classic example if we take a look at beams if you take a look at the beams in your buildings and so on these beams usually the the this vertical dimension and the length of the beam is usually quite high compared to the this but this this uh, lateral this this transverse direction that you have over here so if you take a you know small element within the within the beam that you see over here this small element and if you are say you know loading it with a you know load with a load which is acting in that y plane over there essentially the stresses in the z direction tend to vanish or tend to become zero so within the beams also you have several of these plane stress elements which are acting over there now if we isolate these elements as you can tell this this is sort of a representation of this one over here where your sigma z tau zx and tau zy becomes equals to zero now if you take this isolated element and if you just write it over here so this constitutes a plane stress 2d element and this is the crux of this chapter we are essentially going to deal with the small elements over here and as you see this element that you have here this particular face and this particular face are you know cut perpendicular to the longitudinal axis of the beam and these faces over here are parallel to the longitudinal axis so essentially either perpendicular or parallel over here now for these elements we will see at the same point within the body if you rotate the element and i will show you the figure in a minute if you rotate the element how do these stresses change how, how what happens to sigma x what happens to the tau x y over here now one very interesting thing you may note that you know in among all these stresses the one which is always easiest to draw is the tau why because once you draw one tau over here all the other arrows that you see these guys becomes automatically fixed why because if this points vertically up in the opposite phase to balance that one you must have a vertically down force right now these two over here in this case will will, will result in an anti-clockwise moment so to balance that you have to have a clockwise set of tau so which is this guys over here so if you have one tau you know the other tau automatically these are small interesting tidbits which will help you draw the stress element in the rotated plane that we have over here now before we go ahead let's take a look at some of the conventions because conventions, the sign conventions are important here and you're already familiar with this one but let's just recap quickly right now we know stresses we typically deal as positive so these sigma x that you have and sigma y that you have over here uh, these are all positive stresses because it is tending to pull the element along both sides right now tau xy remember before going into this one what we had you know decided about tau xy is that if the tau xy generates in a positive plane and points towards a positive direction is positive if the tau xy generate is generated in a negative plane it points towards a negative direction it is still positive the only instance where tau is negative is that if it generates in a positive plane and and orients in the negative direction and so on just a quick example here for example if you take a look at this tau it generates on a positive plane why because the outward normal is towards the positive x axis and the tau itself points towards the positive y direction so it is positive over here now let's look at this one this one is uh, this particular face is the, is the the normal to that is points towards the negative while the tau also points towards towards the negative so double negative is a positive so in essence 
all the stresses that you see, all the shear stresses that you see in this particular element are positive. So we are starting off with a completely positive element where the stresses are tending to pull and the tau's are also positive. Now, what we are going to study, if you take this element over here and if you rotate it about a particular axis, right, if the element becomes something like this, that is, you are rotating the element over, you know, a particular angle theta over, over there and theta is also considered positive when it is acting in the anti-clockwise manner. So theta, the original x was here. I have given an anti-clockwise rotation of theta, which as per convention we are going to follow is the positive. Now, about this theta, and remember, this is within the same point within the body, within the same point within the body, you are say you have a particular point you're looking at planes like this you're looking at planes like this looking at planes like this right so within the same point in the body if you give a rotation of theta what happens to the sigma x and what happens to the tau x y as as you can see over here after rotating this one say the perpendicular axis becomes x prime now about x prime how does sigma x change and what is the changed value that is represented by the sigma x prime uh, what is the value of the sigma y prime how does the shear change what is tau x prime y prime so this is what we are trying to find out over here now uh writing these these expressions that what is the dependence on these stresses on the original set of stresses that you have so these are ones you can easily calculate from the fundamental relations which we have studied now about this rotated axis to find this relationship over, over relationships over here as you can tell it involves a fairly you know exhaustive set of algebraic manipulations so we are not going to write out every single step it is very easy to do i am here only going to guide you that how you you know take sections and then you balance essentially balancing the forces and then back calculating the stresses and finding the stresses which are there right now for this one for this element over here it is you can think of it as simple as that if this rotation is theta over here you can you can you can imagine this as within this element if you take a plane theta because you're looking at the same point within the element right so if you're taking up you know a, a, a anti-clockwise theta over here and if you take this small chunk this small rectangle that you see over here and if you resolve the forces about this x prime you will end up getting that sigma x prime so within the same place within the body i'm just taking different planes so if i take this original element and if i cut an angle of theta and I try to resolve the forces there I will essentially get my you know my transformed set of stresses in the rotated plane so if you take a look and you know you can take a look at these expressions in your at, at your own leisure time that if you take this small triangular element which I just isolated and if I balance the forces over here what you will essentially get now we are slowly going into the transform relations and this is where I want you to pay your full attention we are slowly you know getting into how to get the sigma x prime how to get the sigma y prime how to get the tau x prime y prime that we have over here now if you resolve if you uh, write out all the stresses and remember we always do force balance we never do stress balance because eventually your forces has to balance out so if you do the you know the force balancing equation and if you're interested you can go through these equations or you can take a look at any of the standard textbooks which are recommended for this course you will see that the transformed sigma x prime right about this rotated axis that we have over here so let me go back to the previous slide this transformed sigma x prime depends upon all these set of stresses that you have over here through this particular relationship and this is easy to remember if you write it out a couple of times it's very easy to remember it is essentially your sigma x prime is sigma x plus sigma y divided by 2 plus sigma x minus sigma y divided by 2 cosine of 2 theta where remember theta is that anti-clockwise angle through which you have rotated the element plus tau x y sine of 2 theta right so if you write it out a couple of times it will make sense and it will have it ingrained in your brain because you will see so this is the sigma x prime when you will see the expressions for the sigma y prime remember sigma y prime is this guy over here about acting about the rotated you know y axis y prime axis rotated by the theta and also the tau x prime y prime which you which is this guy over here which is you know this essentially this one over here so let's look at all these expressions that you will see 
right so this is the tau x prime y prime that you will get so this is the expression for that one that is negative of sigma x minus sigma and these are easy to remember trust me if you write it out a couple of times once you see the the entire set of equations let me maybe go to that that will become easy for you right so now we have the sigma x prime which we calculated like this see this is the sigma y prime now what is the easy way to calculate sigma y prime? You can again take an element which is you know rotated at a particular angle and you can resolve the forces. Otherwise, the easy thing to do is that if you have the sigma x prime over here, remember in this rotated element, if this face rotates by a theta over here, this particular face, the angle that it makes, so this face over here makes them, this face over here makes an angle theta with this horizontal axis. And this face, which was you know initially perpendicular at 90 degree, now it makes a theta plus 90. So in this expression, if you replace this theta over here with, with theta plus 90, you will essentially get this sigma y prime that you have, this stress you will get directly. So these are the expressions that you get. Now you see that how nicely symmetric these, these expressions are, right? So let's go ahead in, in to the next slide to see all the expressions together so that it makes sense. Okay, so this is what we get over here. So we will come to this one later. So this is this is this is what you have overall. So if you have an element which is originally oriented like this over here and if you rotate this element anti-clockwise positive with an angle theta about this rotated element what are the stresses sigma x prime sigma y prime and tau x prime y prime this is our objective now these are the set of equations that you now you see how symmetric nice and beautiful these expressions are you get sigma x prime as average of the stress sigma x plus this is the original stress in the original element sigma x plus sigma y by 2 plus sigma x minus sigma y by 2 cosine of 2 theta plus tau x y sine 2 theta now to get the sigma y prime i simply had to replace theta with 90 plus theta and this gives rise to a equation very similar to this and only difference or the only difference between them is that the sign flips for these last two terms over here so the first term remains the same the terms the modulus of the terms remains the same so only the sign flips for the last two terms you have a negative over here negative over here simply because you are replacing this theta by theta plus 90 over here and the last expression is for the tau x prime y prime this is also easy to remember you see in this expression compared to the previous ones you do not have this first term that you see you have the last two terms over here and the only difference is that the first one is negative and the cosine becomes sine and the sine becomes cosine and this one becomes a positive so if you write it a couple of times i encourage you to grab a notebook write it a couple of times it will get ingrained in your in your mind that you have over here now one very important thing to observe which will help you in uh, deriving stresses and an inclined plane is this interesting observation that i have noted over here you see that in the original element over here right you have this sigma x and sigma y so some of these you know sigma x plus sigma y over here now about this rotated element you have the sigma x prime about this sigma y prime about this which which are these expressions over here if you add these two numbers if you add you know this equation if i call this equation one and if i call this equation two right so if you you know kind of add these two guys over here you will get this one now you see once you add this you get sigma x prime plus sigma y prime is equals to sigma x plus sigma y so the sum of the normal stresses this is very important the sum of the normal stresses about any inclined plane remains the same as the sum of the normal stresses in the original plane and it is valid for any rotation theta if you have a rotated element or a straight element with a sigma x sigma y and if you take the summation of that if you rotate that element about any plane right you will still see that some of the normals always remain the same so this is an interesting and important observation over here yeah, so these are the key takeaways these are the overall in the nutshell what we discussed in this particular uh, lecture that 
if you have an element over here and if you rotate that one these are the expressions for the stresses about the rotated element remember it is at the same point within the structure you're just looking at a different plane which is rotated but an angle of theta from the horizontal with theta being positive anti-clockwise in this case right these are the set of stresses for the rotated element so these are the three main expressions always remember in the 2d element you have essentially three stresses to worry about one is the sigma x second one is the sigma y and the last one is the tau x y right so these are the for the rotated element the stress the set of stresses that you have over here and also remember that the sum of the normals in the rotated element about any angle of rotation remains the same and is equals to the sum of the normal stresses for the original element that you have over there now that we have this very basic set of equations let's go ahead and look at an example problem where we will be given an element and you are asked to rotate that element about a particular angle and find the rotate and find the set of stresses for the rotated element